Hey, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to retouch photos in Photoshop, but still retain the texture so they look natural. I'm gonna show you how to do it really quickly too, and I know you got a bunch of photos to edit if you're watching this video, so let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, you're in Lightroom, you wanna select a photo, first thing you wanna do is right click that image, click edit in, and you're gonna click edit in Photoshop 2022. Now, it's gonna open right up, and you'll have the image right in front of you. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you get rid of the blemishes the obvious blemishes first, right? The ones that don't occur naturally in the skin. I'm gonna hit Control J so that I have an extra layer to work on. I'm gonna select my healing brush tool and I'm gonna get to work, right? I want this to be a soft brush, um, 0%, and then you can change the diameter obviously with the mouse. So I'm gonna hold Alt, select this right here. I'm just gonna clean over some of these, these blemishes here. So, Keep in mind, you don't want to get rid of the actual uh, naturally occurring pores in the skin. Just wherever you've got some unnatural, maybe some blackheads, maybe you've got um, some pimples, things like that. Like You want to clean those up. Uh, everything else we'll deal with when we do our frequency separation. But first things first, let's clean some of this up. Down here. Um, looks good. I'm just going to touch some of this a little bit and then these two right here. And we can always clean some of this up later, but just a hard high level once over will work, right? Actually, let me touch this just a little bit. Actually, no, it'll be fine, because I'll show you. All right, that's step one. I'm gonna shift click on the background layer. I'm gonna hit Control E to merge those layers together. Now that I've got those layers merged together, the next step is gonna be the frequency separation part of this thing. We're gonna do dust and scratches. And so two things you wanna do, right? We're gonna create an action so that we don't have to do this every time we edit a photo. That gets old, right? So let's create our own action. First things first, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna click actions. It may look a little different because yours may just look like a triangle here, but if you open it up, you'll see that it says actions. If you don't have actions selected, go up here to window and then make sure that actions is checked. You checked op actions should open up. We're going to create a group. So let's open up group here, and I'm gonna type in frequency separation. You can see I already got one up there. I'm gonna name this one two. Name yours one, or name it whatever the hell you want, who cares? All right, now that we've got that opened up, we can start creating our first action. So under here, we're gonna click new action, and we're gonna name this one frequency separation. For me, number two. And you can see we've got a red dot here that says record. We're recording. Every action you do in Photoshop is now going to record. So make sure you follow these steps exactly as I do them. First step, it's like the background here. We're going to make two copies, Control J, Control J. Let's rename those copies. Double click on layer one. This is the colors layer. Double click on layer one copy. This is the textures layer. Let's turn off the textures layer for now. So we're going to click that little eyeball there. Then we're gonna select the colors layer. Once we're there, we're gonna apply a filter. So let's go up to filter. And then we're gonna go down to noise. And then we're gonna click dust and scratches. This part is very important. I'm gonna click somewhere where I can see texture. Right now, this is set to five pixels. I'm gonna turn that down to one. You can see this is how much texture is actually there. You wanna turn this up until you have the textures are gone, not too far gone but you can still see the colors there. So I'm gonna change it to two. I'm gonna to go to four. And I think four may be good. Yeah, let's go to four. Now this is all depending on how many megapixels your photo actually is, which typically is determined on how, how you shoot with your specific camera. Make sure that yours, you can still see the colors but the textures are mostly gone. I'm gonna click okay. Now we've got that applied to our colors layer. I'm gonna turn the textures layer back on now. Now we're gonna go up to image and we're gonna click apply image. Once you're here, make sure your settings match mine, right? We're gonna make sure that the source is the same photo we're working on. The layer is gonna be the colors layer, channels RGB. For blending, we'll make sure that this says subtract. And then 100% opacity, two for scale, 128 for offset. We're gonna click okay. If you've done it right, you should have grade here. You should see just a little bit of texture through there. I'm gonna click down this arrow here under layers, select the blending mode, and I want the blending mode for the textures layer to be linear light. Now, once I've got that turned on, we're good to go. I'm gonna create a group. So I'm gonna select colors, 
shift click on textures. I'm gonna hit control G to make a group. I'm gonna rename that group frequency separation. Once I rename that group, I'm gonna open that folder up. I'm gonna select the colors layer and then I'm gonna select my brush. I'm gonna select the mixer brush. Good, now once you've got all those steps done, we're gonna hit the stop button right here. Got it, good. Now if you did that right, you should have your frequency separation too, and then you should have all of the actions underneath there. Great, perfect. Now once we've got that done, we can actually do some work right here in the textures layer, right? In the, in the colors layer with the mixers brush. This is the way I do it. You can do it differently if you like. But to save time, this has been my, my strategy. I wanna even out these colors between each of these color changes, right? You got dark brown here, you've got a lighter shade here. You got a brown here, a lighter shade here. You got light brown here, more of a white brown here, dark brown. We want, to, we want to mix those colors together so that it's a smooth transition and even the colors themselves are smooth. So I've got my mixer brush set to 80%, 75, mix 90%. You can play with the flow. I use 10% because again, I want to do this fast. Sometimes that can lead to over editing a photo. You be the judge of however you want to do it. And I'm just going to start painting, right? I'm going to click, I'm going to brush. Even like some of these colors, make sure you blend the colors themselves together. But then also find where those colors touch each other and just clean that up, right? You want, you want it to be a, uh, a relatively smooth transition between colors. And then colors that are the same, clean those up too. Let's just go wild with the mixer brush, to be honest with you. Go wild with it. Because if you'll notice, right, I'm gonna, you'll see that the textures are still there, right? You can see all the textures but then the colors are starting to blend together really nicely, right? Here we go, I'm gonna clean some of that up. Got some dark spots there, let me get some of that. And just have fun with it, right? This is therapeutic, this should be, this should be fun. Editing should be fun. It's not fun when your clients are asking you for photos, that's not the most fun, but this process should get you to where you can get your, your clients their photos faster, especially if you're doing a lot of retouched photos, right? So we're just gonna paint in here, paint off up in here. Let's, let's mix this colors here together, right? Avoid this, the textures, right? You wanna try to stay off the eyebrows, to be honest. This strategy for me, let's take a look. I love that, I love that. Let's get up in here. Right, we wanna get there. Be careful with the nose, right? If you mix the colors too much here, you can have your nose really appearing flat. But let's get let's get some of that. But let's just get some of this cleaned up, right? This area right here is always pretty tough, but let me see. Let me get off from here. Let's paint some of this. Good, good, good. I love that. Good, I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna touch some of this a little bit. You can also do this with, even if you're not just editing like the face, if you've got like body parts, like the chest, the arms, the legs, you can use the same strategy and this will really smoothen out that skin while retaining the texture, right? Let's take a look. Love that, love that, looks really good. And don't be afraid, like if you if you accidentally go too far, control Z that. Control Z, control Z on your keyboard. Let's get rid of some of that. All right, I love this. Now I've noticed here, like these pores are more like, it feels like whiteheads a little bit. So I'm gonna click my textures layer and I'm gonna use my mixture brush maybe on a slightly smaller scale and touch them just a little bit. I want them to blend a little more smoothly into the skin as well. So let's let's, Touch that just a little bit. Good, and then I'm gonna come in here and just clean up some of this. So I'm gonna change back to my healing brush and I'm gonna clean up some of these textures just a little bit. Yeah, let's get some of that. Going back to my colors layer here, got my mixer brush. I'm gonna mix some of this. And then basically when you use the mixer brush, it picks up from where you click initially and it paints and mixes them all together. So I'm gonna get in some of here and really clean this up. Good, 
good. I love this. Because when you think about it, I mean, when you start looking at the colors and you clean up the colors, blemishes really show because it's the light coming off of these blemishes that add shadow. And that's what makes them really, really visible. That's right. So if you get in there and you clean those up, what you're left with is just skin that looks smooth, soft, silky goodness. Let's say that again. Smooth, soft, silky goodness. I'm going to get in this texture layer here, touch some of this. Guys, go wild with it. Go wild. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, these textures right here are a little stronger than I like. I'm going to get in the textures here. I'm actually going to get my lasso tool out. I'm sorry, not my lasso tool. I'm going to get my patch tool. And I'm going to see what this looks like if I just select. Yeah, let's get some of this texture up here instead. Same thing with the colors here. Let's go in here. Yeah, let's clean that up. Control Z that. Yep. That's perfect. I love this. This little area right here. All right. Now we've completed our frequency separation, right? We've got an image that we like. It's nice and smooth. Um, you can take this image, but what's awesome is the next time you go in to do this specific process, you don't have to do it again, everything again, because you created that action, right? And so I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to delete my frequency separation out, right? Just like I pulled up the image, it's just the background layer here with the image, with the blemishes taken out. I'm going to change. I'm going to click this little hamburger here. I'm going to select the button mode. And now you can see all of the different actions that I have. And so when I open a new image, I click frequency separation. It's going to do all of those steps for me. It even selected the colors layer for me. I've got my mixer brush with the right color. All I got to do is start painting, right? Go to my textures, start painting away. And there you have it. Your image is ready to go. So you got five images to do. Click your frequency separation, paint away. You can do it in 10, 20 minutes. So if you like this video, click the like button. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.